Hey guys, I'm Mark. I'm Alon. And welcome to another episode of The Next Man Up. Well, welcome back listeners to The Next Man Up podcast. We're excited that you have joined us once again and you are in for a treat today. We we are going to dive right into the second half of a conversation that Alan and I are having with Eric Watts and Jeff Wickerham about what it really means to father children that you didn't father and what that looks like, the challenges, the, the struggles, the different scenarios in which that presents. If you missed the previous episode, you might want to start there where you can get the, the more complete version of Jeff's story and Eric's story and, and how we came together to be having this conversation here. Because for this one, we're going to just jump right back in, pick up right where we left off last time. And so without any further ado, here we go. Okay. So I, I tell you that story just to share, like, yeah. what is it like? I'm still learning and still it's real. It's real time, right? It is real time. Um, and it is hard and it is difficult. And we have the two of hers and two of mine and two of ours and they're all ours. And yeah, you, Eric had mentioned that you call your son a son Mm -hmm. and I call our kids, our kids. And it's hard because I look at all of them as my sons and right. daughters. Mm-hmm. And there's other times where, like, trying to explain things. Well, technically, yes. According, you know, the words I use, this is my stepson, this is my stepdaughter. But I don't look at them that way. Mm-hmm. I, I look at them as our kids. Sure. And it was really, really, really hard uh, to say that um, to certain people. Mm. Um and what I mean by that is uh, Eric is um, Sarah's ex-husband and two of our kids' dad, Oliver and Marley's dad. And I wanted to be careful when I said, you know, these are my kids. And I still, when I post something to my blog, mm-hmm. I feel like I sometimes am offending Eric when mm-hmm. I call them my kids. And I don't think he takes it that way. But I want to be cognizant, like, he's part of their life. Yeah. And that's hard to hear some other guy say, hey, those are my kids. Yeah. Yeah. You want to be thoughtful. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, so maybe maybe part of what it's time for is to sit down and have that hard conversation with Eric, not me, y'all, by the way. They're, they're probably listening <laughs> the other live, Eric. like, so, what? So to answer that question, yeah. um, we, we are good. We have a good okay. relationship. Okay. Um, I had that conversation with him about a month after Sarah and I started dating, and about mm-hmm. a month we introduced the kids. Mm-hmm. And I took Eric my wife's ex-husband on a date. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, we went to the local BW threes on a Sunday afternoon, shared a beer and watched football and talked. That's and cool. I, wow. I, Was I, that your idea? Yes. Um, okay. I, uh, between my divorce and when Sarah and I started dating, I had dated a couple other people and, uh, those relationships weren't short. They were long. Um, a year, two years each. And I never had that conversation with the other kids' dads. Mm -hmm. And I went into this knowing Sarah was going to be my wife and said, I need to have this conversation Mm -hmm. up front with Eric to let him know that I'm here to support you. You are Oliver and Marley's dad, but I'm going to be in their life and I'm going to love them. Hmm. And... I want you to know that. Like, I'm not here to undermine you, Eric. I'm here to help partner, parent with you. Props to you, man. That takes that takes courage to to be able to step up and have that conversation like that. Yep. It it needed to be done because and and I tell you why, I go back and it's still we're not best friends by any means. We're at ball games and we sit next to each other and talk and say hi. We don't spend time together. Um outside of that but when i went to these other sporting events and saw the other dad there Mm. it was super awkward Mm. 
and mm. because that conversation never happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't think it happened because those women I were dating weren't, I wasn't going to be married to them. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe if I had the conversation, it'd be different, but I, I feel God called me and Sarah together. Um, mm. And it's, it's been awesome uh, wow. for the past five years. But yeah, I had to have that conversation for our relationship to build. Uh, huh. With the kids and with Sarah, did, wow. did does do the kids know that you had this conversation? With? No, no, I don't think they do. Okay, uh-uh. I've never told them. I don't think Sarah has. I don't think Eric has. Okay, um, it may have come out. I've never told them that. Hmm. Though. I ask only because, like you know, this is, this is commercial where uh, a gentleman is sitting at a table and it looks like he's talking to his fiance's or soon to be fiance's husband, but it ends up being the oh, fiance's the boy. boy mm-hmm. I know that commercial. See that yeah. commercial? Yeah. And um, just, just the impact that commercial shows, well, shows sh- could have happened mm-hmm. with a child. I wonder what an impact that would make on the kids. I'm not saying that you need to or that sure. you have to, sure. but knowing that, like... Um, I don't know the vulner the vulnerability that you put on a table, the show of uh, courage and boldness, uh, and um, just the reality of the way that you live was on a table for them to you know I don't want to use the word fight for them but you did mm-hmm. you fought for them um, but to uh, show your love for them like even to the point where you were you were willing to like say hey let's Let's not draw swords towards each other. Let's not, you know, see who can be the better dad, like, you know, uh, Mark Wahlberg or <laughs> Will Farrell. Right, like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, like, but but instead, let's partner together so that our kids can be raised, man. That's that's powerful, man. And I hope one day that your your kids like hear that story and understand the, the impact of it, you know, the power behind it. That's pretty that's pretty I think cool. That- like a lot of lessons that we teach our kids, it's learned over time. Yes, sir. And those things that my parents taught me, I realized through how our relationship is, maybe without them ever saying it, but because, you know, I don't, that's an interesting thought to maybe at some point have that conversation with them. Um, I've never thought of doing that. Hmm. And they may know, they may not, like I they said might, earlier, yeah, but yeah. Um, that's really interesting. Thank you for, for sharing that. No oh, problem. Guys, as you were heading into the relationship that became marriage, knowing that there were kids on the other side or, or kids that you're, you're, you were bringing into it, um, what, what, were, what were some of the big fears mm. that were going through your mind at this time? I know they were there. I'm putting you on the spot. Um, I'm asking for some courage and some vulnerability, partly because I have a story to share as well. And, and we'll get to my version or, or my, um, my circumstance that's relevant here. But I, I wonder if you guys could just articulate what you, what you were afraid of going into those roles. Yeah, sure. So some of the stuff will, will be... I'll say basic or some of the stuff you may already guess. Will he like me? Will he respect me? Mm. Um, will he trust me? Uh, will he listen to what I say when I ask him, tell him to do something? Uh, will he take my advice? You know, will he love me? Mm. You know, um, those are some of the immediate things that come to mind for me. Will I be able to build a good relationship with him? Because remember, they were still in Pennsylvania for two years before they moved here. And even when they moved here, it was really him dropping off his stuff because he was already in college. Mm. So it was all of those things and more. And, and again, we, we have a great relationship now. Um, but it was those things and more. What about you, Jeff? My biggest fear <clears throat> for us is wasn't the kids. And maybe it's because I had that conversation with Eric. I don't know. My biggest fear was, is still is for bringing these kids together, the rules and expectations of our house. 
when we, Sarah and I, combine together, we're different people. We're different parents. Yeah. And so we have different expectations and rules, and we try to form together to create that bond. We still have different opinions um, about how to do things. And so my biggest fear, even today, is the kids can understand these rules and expectations. And they, they're kids. They're going to argue. They're going to do what they can to get away with what they can. And then they go to another house. Mm -hmm. And then they go to another house. Mm -hmm. So our kids, mm -hmm. between the four older ones, they have three different houses. Mm. The four oldest ones have our house. Two of them go to their dad's house. Two of them they go to their mom's house. In that, there's those expectations in those houses. Yeah. Not only with their biological parents, but their parents, boyfriend, and girlfriend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With those expectations. Yeah. So they're dealing yeah. with wow. six mm -hmm. adults. Multiple layers there. And all of their expectations and how to parent and what's good and bad. And, and I've said this um, before, and I'm still trying to understand it, is everybody's different. And how are these kids going to understand what those expectations are? And then when they come back home to our house or when they go back to their house, it's almost like a reprogram button yeah. that has to be pushed. Um, yeah. And it's kind of not fair to them. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it and I struggle with that mm -hmm. because there are all those different expectations and the rules. And are we allowed to have a snack after dinner here? And are we not here? Are we allowed to play our sure. iPads here and not sure. here? Mm -hmm. and so they're figuring out they're smart yeah. kids. They're resilient. Um, <laughs> they're awesome. Yeah. Um, but that my biggest, fear but it's confusing, right? It is confusing. Yeah. So it probably means at the beginning. Yeah. It probably means that you and Sarah have to be crystal clear mm. all, the yeah, time, all the time, you know, mm. at least within, within the boundaries of this house, mm -hmm. the, these are, these yeah. are the rules. These are the guidelines. These are the principles that we live by. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I work in, uh, a public school. Um, sorry, I work in a charter school. Uh, it's open to the public and, um, one of the things I found out recently is something like you're saying right now, um, where, you know, we have a certain way of culture in our school and doing things, norms, mm -hmm. you know, but once the kid is outside of the school, he or she, um, they have other ways and other norms. And then sometimes those norms clash. For instance, when, you know, a f the family of a student comes in and they're like, well, what do you mean you're suspending my daughter or my son for getting into a fight? The other kid, like, started it first. And it's like, well, they both were swinging at each other. Well, that in our house, we say if you get hit, you get hit back. And it's like, mm -hmm. but that's not our way. You know what I mean? So you clash and... And then you got the kid in the middle going, I don't know which way you want me to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's hard, man. It's hard. So what do you do with that? Uh, you know, like for in, in our in our school, you know, I, I'm found saying to parents and students, I go, look, I, I know how it is outside of these walls. Hmm. I know that you may have a different way of doing things, but let me help you learn how to navigate like in here. And in here, this is this is our culture. This is the way we live. And so I want you to live this way. But out there, I get it. I get it. But in here, this is how we do things. And um, like Mark was saying, making it crystal clear, that's that's mm -hmm. got to be like, whoo, you got to be on that button all the time, I bet, you know? Um, but it's important to them. And I bet you they, they appreciate you for it, you know, being clear on expectations. Mm -hmm. I think those of us that haven't had to navigate the divorce and the blended families and 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 what you you're describing Jeff probably take for granted uh, the amount of communication that's necessary yeah. um cuz we just we only have to we don't have to live it in one space you know um my kids don't have to experience what yours do where they go from space to space and the rules change and so i i commend you man it's yeah. it's it's not Both. a it's not yeah. an easy task well and i want to point out that i don't think i interpreted it this way but I don't want, my way isn't the right way. Sarah and my way isn't the right way. And Eric's way isn't the right way. And Sharon's way isn't the right way. It's just a way. A way, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and I shared this story with a friend and he said, you know what? It is hard for those kids, but along kind of what you were saying, you go to different places and there are different expectations yep. wherever you go. Yep. When you go to church, you might not be expected to wear certain clothes, but when you go to watch a soccer game, football game, you could wear certain clothes. And the like guy Ohio doesn't State care, Buckers. but there's those expectations. Yes. <laughs> there's those expectations. Yeah. yeah, you couldn't resist. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, and so these kids are learning that maybe at an earlier age than other kids would need to. Sure. And that's a benefit to them. I'm yeah, like, man. Yeah. Wow, that's a good point. So lemonade out of lemons. I mean, like, right? like yeah. they, are, they would, I would think that later on in life, either now or later on, they they would probably end up appreciating mm-hmm. that. They, or they could end up yeah, appreciating I hope so. that. I hope so. That's the hope, yeah. right? I hope so. Yeah. You go like, wow, man, I learned like, like to, to know that there's di- different ways of doing things um, depending on where I'm at. Um, and, and that was helpful for me to do, to go through that. Thank you. You know You're what I'm welcome. saying? That, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So I want to bring um, I want to bring an adoption perspective yeah. into this conversation and um, and share a little bit of of my story. So mm-hmm. with my with my first, he came early. So we were dealing with preemie and NICU and and you're like oh, what's going to happen? And everything has been fine, um, no no long term problems, and we've been fortunate that way. But because that happened with the first, bed rest was the order for the second, and that was three months of, of mm-hmm. bed rest. And, and doggone it, if my wife was not on the couch or on the bed the entire time. So, I mean, she she was advocating for that little guy that was in her womb, mm-hmm. and uh, she did what was hers to do, and he came out a few weeks early, and he was fine. So, <laughs> so in, in some respects, we were 0 for 2 with the, uh, the standard easy biological pregnancy, although... Mm-hmm two great kids with, with no long-term issues, the pregnancies were like, hmm, do we really want to do this again? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So adoption had been on my wife's heart for a number of years. And uh, so after those two pregnancies, she starts talking about adoption. And guys, I just gripped up. Mm. Like I just got all, all kind of fear mm. in me with adoption. And, and looking back on it, I, I can see how irrational it was. But for me, there was a distinction between the, the known elements of a biological child and the unknown elements of a child that we adopt. Now, the reality is all three of my kids have minds of their own, mm-hmm. and they're somewhat like me and a lot not, yeah. and they will have to make their own choices. But in the moment, all I was seeing was, I don't know where this child is coming from. I don't know what their upbringing will be like before we take responsibility for them. I don't know what the, the medical history is. I, I just, I just got gripped up with fear. Mm. And, um, my wife was there. She was just waiting for me to get on board. And I remember watching an adoption show on uh, one of the cable stations. They were profiling a family uh, that was adopting from Russia. And, um, I heard God say to me, I know you're afraid but do it anyway. Mm. And it was at that point where I'm like, okay, decisions Mm -hmm. made. I I don't know any more than I did before that Mm -hmm. other than I'm being pushed and, and being told to, to go ahead. So that really was the, the point at which I leaned in and said, I'm in. And, um, you know, long story short, we ended up adopting out of Guatemala. Sarah joined our family when she was six months old. She lived with a foster mom from three days uh, old, right out of the hospital up until we we brought her here. Mm-hmm. Um, so she had a fantastic in-country experience mm-hmm. with, with foster mom that loved all over her. And then we got her at six months old. Um, and it's been great, but it's also different. Mm-hmm. There, there is that, there's that difference that's always there. Mm-hmm. The physical difference is there. And she feels it more than we do. Initially, it was like, we're, we're kind of seeing this difference and we, we want to be sensitive. Uh, we were aware of people looking at us because we got two little white boys and this dark hair, dark skin, mm-hmm. Guatemalan princess. 
Um, and, you know, over the last 10, 20 years, international adoption has become much more prevalent in this area. And it's, it's much more, it's, it's much more normalized. Um, but I was aware. And, and as she has grown up and become the person that she is now, she's more aware too. She knows she's different. She knows her story and it, it's open. We'll talk about it whenever, wherever, however. Um, but it, it is, it's just different. It's Mm -hmm. just different. Now, I don't love her any less. I don't love her any differently. But I I do know that there's an emotional wall that's there, an emotional barrier that's there um, that we're we're still working on and working through that Mm -hmm. doesn't exist for my bio boys. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that's part gender, part age, part Mm -hmm. adoption. Like, Mm -hmm. it's hard for me to tease out all the different threads there. Um, but it's, it's different. And I, I I have to, I have to constantly remind myself that she lives that difference on a daily basis. Yes. I can see past the physical differences and she's my daughter. Mm -hmm. Now she's got a biological mom in Guatemala. She's got biological siblings in Guatemala, none of which we know. And, and we know very little about, Mm -hmm. um, so I don't have the I don't have the family right across the street or across town that I have to interact with, and, and you know, in in that respect. Um, but they're there. She knows they're there, and and there's this part of her that is still Guatemalan, as as much as she has been raised in this um, this culture, this environment. It's still her heritage. It's yeah. still. Yep. It's yep. her physical resemblance, yeah. mm-hmm. and and I don't know how she's going to choose to process this over time, um, but there is still this identity of hers that was initiated in Guatemala mm-hmm. by parents that she doesn't know, and um, and and we removed her from that. Now we've loved all over her. We've given her every advantage that we've given her her brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a part of her that's still in that in that country, and and maybe it will, maybe it will gnaw at her, and she'll have to resolve it. Maybe not. I don't know. That's her choice to make, and we'll support her either way. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole decision for me really started with an irrational fear mm-hmm. that this one's going to be different. This one's going to be harder. This one is 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 going to come with more unknowns and. Like, really, is that true? Do I have any sense for what's going to happen to my biological kids? No. I have a sense from where their DNA and their genetics might have originated. And I can fill out the medical history forms a little easier for them at the doctor's office. But there's no more guarantee with them. And I can see that now. But 14, 15, 16 years ago, when we were in the midst of of the process, like, Mm. I, I just... I was caught in this fear of the unknown, yeah. and uh, it, it took a divine nudge to, to really push me out of it. Sure, man. Wow. I, you know, oh, I, sorry, I backed away from the mic there. Like, uh, as you're talking, I, I feel like I can speak a little bit from where uh, your daughter is coming from. Yeah. He's like, like I'm, I'm the kid that lived that. Mm. Um, so being a foster kid, I, I think I counted up to like 23, 24 different foster homes oh my gosh, wow. that I ran through as a kid. Statistically, um, you should not be here having this conversation with us. Oh, no, right? man. Mm. No, no, no. But I am. You know what I mean? Praise God. Like, that's cool. Right, right. 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 But like, I've, my last foster home um, was the Taylors, who are now my in-laws. Uh, I don't even call them. I just call them mom and dad. Mm. They were, so... But, man, like, um, watching, like, looking back and, and watching how I was acting, I can, I can totally see my fears uh, as a young boy of, are you honestly truly going to love me? Mm. You know, uh, and are you truly going to provide? Are you going to truly, can I trust you? Mm-hmm. Um, and I watched in the little things, like a lot of foster homes I went into, like, you know, I would get a half a cup of Kool-Aid and, you know, the biological kids would get the full cup. Mm-hmm. Um, Christmas um, that I ever spent in any foster home, it seemed like I'd get like a couple of presents, mm-hmm. but the other kids, they're biological. They get a lot of presents, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, rules that seem different for me, 
you know, it was like a lot, a lot of rules, mm-hmm. you know, but they're kids, they could do whatever. I just did the same thing that he or she did, but I'm getting busted for it and they're not. Mm-hmm. Like, well, they're my kids. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it just that that feeling of just being out of place and not a part of a family mm-hmm. just seemed to travel a lot with me wherever I went. And um and so that became like a testing ground for me. I tested people a lot. Um and with the tailors, like they just, man, mom, dad, they they went on vacation, Alon was going. Like, you mm-hmm. know, they, you know, uh one kid got a shirt, every kid got a shirt. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, dude, you don't get a half a glass of Kool-Aid. You get as much Kool-Aid as you want. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you yeah. know, they really pressed it. And in though they were I think they pushed really hard to show that they loved me. Um, but because of the trauma that I've gone through. Um, and because of the 23, 24 different homes before, like I didn't believe them. Mm -hmm. I think, Mm -hmm. I think the, the, the really push for me that there was two, there was two points where I realized this family was it. Um, one was, um, I had gotten mad at, at, uh, mom about something and dad about something. Uh, but honestly it was, I think I was triggered in some way and I responded by just tearing up the house. Mm. I took a bat to like the TVs and um, smashed up my room, uh, clothes everywhere, holes in the walls. I was just destructive. I couldn't believe what like I put them through. God, I love you, mom and dad. Um, <laughs> I really do. Uh, and I remember uh, Sue came up the stairs and she sat at the door and she said, "I've called the cops and they're gonna come and take you." Uh, to a detention center and I knew it like right then in my head I was like I knew it I, this is all that I needed to do was just destroy the house and like mm. they'd send me back they're just like every other family mm-hmm. but then she added you're gonna be brought to a detention center and when you're ready to come home mm-hmm. just give me a call mm-hmm. but I can't have you acting like this in our home so you're gonna leave mm. but it's up to you when you come back home and I was like, wait, this is new. <laughs> this is totally different. I'm like, what? Wait, wait, like, this doesn't compute. Like, you mean this up to me? I thought you were going to kick me out. But now it's like, I have the power. Like, so I can, so you said home and like every, all these things are running through my head. It took about the whole weekend, Sunday afternoon, I am calling. And I remember journaling, like, mm-hmm. I think these guys like me. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? And so, like, she, she and she, she was a woman of her word. Ray was a man of his word. He came, she came, and they picked me up and brought me home. And from from that point on, mm. there was this sense of like, this is home. Wow. You know, this is really home. Um, the 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 next piece to me that just kind of just drilled it home and killed like my fear of them not wanting me in their home and calling me their son. Um, so. We, you know, listeners, you know, Shannon and I, uh, we, we joke around like I married my foster sister. Uh, <laughs> it's weird. But uh, <laughs> so we, we, we moved to Ohio for you guys. We moved to Ohio and uh, Ray would say, hey, walk Shannon to work. And so we began to walk into work with each other. And I'm like, we started getting to know each other a little more. Before this, we could not stand each other. This, it was almost for you. The light was showing on. Mm. And... Um, I was like, oh my gosh, I like this woman. <laughs> and oh, this is weird. And like, he's just getting all these weird feelings and whatnot. And so uh, uh, she, I was so nervous. Ray is an ex firefighter. He's like six something. And right like, now, it's like he's an old gentleman, but he still put the fear of God in me if he wanted to. And uh, but he was, he was pretty big, you know. And um, uh, I sent Shannon to talk to Ray and Sue about uh, us dating. Mm. I sent I, Shannon. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah. Yeah. I was scared, man. She was I like, you that. wimp. You are a wimp, man. And so um, she, she, uh, Ray calls, calls me in and he sits me down at the table and it was, it was mom, dad, Shannon and me. He looks at Shannon first and um, he says, that's my son. Mm. Don't hurt him. Mm. Mm. And even as I talk about it now, I get like choked yeah, up because right. like the father's love. Like, I, I mean, I just, I started bawling at the table. I couldn't believe it. Like, I was, you, that's your daughter. But you looked at her first and was like, yeah. that's my son. 
Then he just looked at me and he didn't have to say anything. I was just like, <laughs> I was like yes, sir. Enough <laughs> yep, said. Enough said. Uh-huh. It, like, you know, and the mom chimes in. Okay, now we got that clear. You got to move out. Yep. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, <laughs> this is good. You know, so, but like those moments for me, those are moments that really proved um, that they were for real, that they wanted to be my parents mm-hmm. and that they were parenting me, mm-hmm. um, whether I wanted to receive it at the time or not. You know what I'm saying? And um, their great. love like just pushed out for like from there, you know. He could have done that in the opposite order and would have sent a totally different yes. message. Mm. Oh, totally. Yeah. That is... Yeah. Wow. And that I asked him about it. I'm like, I was like, why'd you, why'd you hit me first? And he was like, I don't know. Somebody me just said, talk to Shannon first. Wow. And I was like, do you mm. know the impact of that on my life? He's like, yeah, now I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was huge. He was like, I just love you. I wanted you to know that I love you. You know? And that, that, hmm. ooh, that hits me in the heart every time. I think about that, wow. but but there are like to I wanted to share a perspective of a kid, yeah, part of a family that is not n- what the society calls normal. You know what I mean? Like, what is normal? Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what is that? But we we you know the kid has a perspective as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and though there's fears of the parents, like there's fears of the kids too. So fathers, uh, if you're out there listening, like hear that as well, like. There's a different perspective that comes from the child. He or she may be looking at you like, I just, you're unknown to me. And I'm hoping to know uh, in Quelch's fear that I have in me that thinks maybe you don't want me here. I, I haven't shared my fear story with Sarah quite quite that way because I, I'm, I'm not sure how it'll play. But as sure. I'm processing your, your story and... and and what you just said, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how beneficial it would be to kids in situations like Christian or, or you know, the the two that that you inherited, Jeff, through through your marriage, to be like, hey man, I'm I'm in it, but I got fears, mm-hmm. and I, I know you do too, and so e- even if we don't name them together, let's mm-hmm. at least acknowledge that I'm a little afraid. And I know you're a little afraid, mm-hmm. and, and let's try to figure this out together. Yeah. Now you can't have yeah. that with a four year old. Right. No, or, no. <laughs> but but the older they get, and sure. boy, you guys know this. Kids are smarter than we give mm-hmm. them credit mm-hmm. for, right? They're more perceptive. You said this earlier, Eric. They're 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 more resilient. They're more way more resilient. Yeah, like may, maybe maybe we we can give them a little more space to 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 live that fear mm-hmm. and, and have it be okay if they mm-hmm. know that, that I'm afraid too, yeah. you know? Yeah. Does, yeah. does that make sense? Yeah. No, it does. I mean, I, you guys I are kind of nodding your heads. Yeah, I think that's it's very good for any dads, uh, any fathers listening. Take heed to that. If you are someone who writes this stuff down, you should write that down because that's something, looking back, hindsight, like, man, yeah, that would have been great for us to do. Now, Christian and I had other conversations, sure. but we didn't have that. Yeah, fear conversation. Yeah. We we worked our way through it, and I could see it, and I'm sure he could too. The various fears on my side, and me seeing his, and and all that, mm-hmm. and even from mom's side, my wife's side. But if we would have sat down, the three of us, then he and I, as father and son, to do that, oh man, that would have been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, guys, for for the listeners that are out there that are like, man, Eric's story is my story or it resonates or Jeff's story is, is so similar to mine. Um, what, 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 I hesitate to use the word advice, but what suggestions would you offer to, to be able to, to navigate through this things that have, that you think have worked well, or if you put yourself in that situation five, six years ago, um, things that you might've done that, that we haven't already talked about that would be beneficial for that guy that's out there. That's like, yep, this is, this is my story. You guys are, you guys are hitting it on the head. And, and, um, so, so what, what would you, what would you say to those, to those guys? What do you think, Joe? (laughs) Guys in my situation who who <clears throat> have uh, non biological or step kids, um, and specifically ones whose dads 
are still involved and whose moms are still involved. It's an, <laughs> for me, it's an easy answer, um, but hard to do. Um, that just sounds like, like wisdom right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just like any relationship, whatever the relationship is, if it's at work, if it's with your kids, if, with, if it's with your wife, if it's with the exes, communication, mm-hmm. uh, talking, you know, if, yeah. if things are left unsaid, mm-hmm. there may not be a horrible thing that happens tomorrow. But that next thing that left unsaid, it's just going to build upon yeah. one another. And all of a sudden, there's going to be an explosion. Yeah, sure. And, and so communication and getting it out there. And it is not easy. It is not easy to have those hard conversations. It never is. Yeah. Whether it's with the dad of the kids that are in your life now at a bar. Or if it's with your wife. Or if yeah. it's with... Your ex-wife or my ex-wife; mm-hmm. those conversations are hard, but they need to happen. Yeah, um, and so make sure they happen. Sure, um, and do it at the right time. Um, how you do it, how you say it. I think Eric, you had said something about tone of voice mm-hmm. is huge. Um, when you say it, mm-hmm. with what your dad, what we just pointed out, if he yeah. would have said that in the opposite way, yeah, it's huge. Yeah, and, and so when and how and just saying it is huge sure. um, for those roles. So yeah. That's good. That's, that's good, really, man. Really good. That's good. Eric? I would say uh, a couple things. One, I, I agree with Jeff wholeheartedly. That's a, He's exactly right. So take heed to that for all who are, are listening to this. Um, I'd also say something that I would call, well, back up. First, take a deep breath. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just take a deep breath. Yeah, it's important to you. You love the kids. You love your spouse. That's going to shine through. Yeah, that's breathe. Good. Be easy on yourself. Yeah, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't take. Watch this. Don't take yourself so seriously. <laughs> it's okay, <laughs> yeah, man. It's okay. Yep. Uh, these are all things that I had to tell myself, and that other people had to tell me. Like it's okay. They know you love them. You want to do a good job. You're going to do a good job. Breathe. It's okay. So start there first. Um, And and the next thing I would say would would be something that I would call practical prayer. Don't get all deep and spiritual with the dusts and the vows and I need a word. I'm going to throw out a fleece and all that stuff like Gideon. (laughs) You don't need to do all of that. You know, I'm going to go dip myself in the Olentangy River seven times. (laughs) You you don't don't need to do all that kind of stuff. (laughs) But just asking the Lord for practical wisdom to do the everyday stuff well Mm -hmm. and he'll give it to you and listen more than you talk whether it's to him to your spouse to your kids when i I teach i'm an adjunct business prophet ohio dominican and i tell this to my students there who are anywhere from 18 to 88 you got two ears and one mouth listen more than you talk Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. listen more than you talk to whomever it is you're dealing with Listen more than you talk. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I would just advise fathers, men, dads out there to enjoy. Enjoy the moments. Enjoy the times. Sure. Now, I'm not telling you in the, in the tyranny of the moment when kids are going berserk to, oh, this, this is so great. <laughs> you know, it's like your, your parents are like, oh, he's tearing up the house. This is special. Just, we just look at him go. We look at him go. Him. Yeah, look at that. He's got so much potential. You're right, right. It's like, wow, maybe we should put him on the baseball team <laughs> if you weren't already. You know? Yeah. I'm not saying that, but understanding that, you, you know, don't sweat the small stuff and learn how to enjoy the moments and understand that whatever that moment is, the world isn't going to end. Yeah. Your relationship with them will not be perpetually damaged Mm. or forever damaged. It may take a hit, but think about it. When our father, heavenly and earthly fathers, when they did, or if they do still discipline us, Mm -hmm. how's that feel? Doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good at all. So when we discipline them, of course, they're not going to like it. Nobody likes discipline, yeah. man. Yeah, I mean, Nobody. But we need to do it anyway. 
And out of that, if we do it in love and we do it as we model our God, our Father, as we model Him in that, they're going to eventually, eventually understand and come around to knowing that Dad loves me. Mm -hmm. Forget all the blood lines and blood ties and all that stuff. Dad loves me. You hear yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. what matters. Yeah, that's huge. That's it. That's good. That's good. Man. Cool. That's really good. Guys, I, I imagine that there's listeners out there that um, that are thinking, boy, I, I wish I could ask Eric a question. I wish I could ask Jeff a question or, or maybe have a cup of coffee with him. How, how can how can our listeners connect with you? If, if you would just, just share how they can they can find you guys. Sure. I, I'll give you, I got too many email addresses. Uh, so I'll give you the short, easy one, Word Talk 104. That's W-O-R-D-T-A-L-K 104 at gmail.com. You can text me if you want, 614-579-8923. 614-579-8923. Cool. And, cool. and uh, Jeff, how can listeners get a hold of you? Sure, a couple of different ways. Um, email Jeff, J-E-F-F dot Wickerham, W-I-C-K-E-R-H-A-M at gmail.com. Uh, you can also check out, I do a daily blog um, called Smile On Together. I write it about my life, um, which is mostly seen through the eyes of looking at the kids in our house, um, but daily ways to look at life in a positive manner. So you can check out the website, smileontogether.org, um, and kind of keep keep up with me through that channel. Cool. 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 Guys, thank you so much oh, wow. for, for being with us. Th- this, I don't know how it was for you. But it was fantastic just, yeah. just to bring other voices yeah. into this, sure. other experiences. You know, in, in many ways, we're saying the same things, mm-hmm. but from different lenses, yeah, right. you know, mm-hmm. and from different scars and, and, and celebrations and success points. And so I just want to thank you again for, for joining us and, and for, for being open to, to share your stories. Mm-hmm. The things that work, the things that didn't, and, and speak into the to the lives yeah. of listeners that are with us. So thank you. Yeah, Appreciate thank it. You. Thank, you. thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and, and I want to send a special thank you, Mark. You kind of alluded to it at the beginning of this conversation. Um, because of the work you guys are doing individually, Alon and Mark, um, I had an amazing moment mm-hmm. with my, at that time, 12-year-old son, okay. where I took him on a canoe trip. And... He talks about it. Every time we ended up oh, at a place at a local bar where they serve lunch and we had lunch there and it was the end of our trip and culmination and it made a difference in my life and mm, his life. That's and cool, man. That wouldn't have happened oh, if man. you guys weren't doing this. So thank you. Yeah. Oh, dude, that's wow. That's, that's, that's humbling. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. it is Thanks for sharing it a- cool. as as well as encouraging. Yeah, it's like it's like fuel in the in the yeah. engine to keep mm-hmm. to keep going. Yeah. So thank you. Thank, thank you, you for that. Thank you for showing up in that way for that that boy. That's really what yes. matters. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. good on Cheers. you, man. Yeah, thank you. And Alan, once again, good Always to be fun, with man. you. These Always are fun. these are good. These are really good. And I, I think this is. Um, even though I haven't walked the divorce thing or haven't walked in the shoes of Eric or Jeff, there are a lot of people that are out there. And this, sure. this is a, it's a, it's a message. It's a conversation that's, that's important to have. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, I'm fortunate, honored to be able to do it in, in this way and, and to do it with you and these other guys. It's Likewise. been, it's been cool. Likewise. All right. Until next time, listeners. Adios. 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 <laughs>Hey, listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at thenextmanup.com. That's feedback at thenextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later.
Hey, listeners, thanks for journeying with us on this Next Man Up podcast. You know, we would love to hear from you. Maybe you have a question or an idea, perhaps a topic for us to consider. If that's you and you want to reach out to us, you can get us at feedback at the nextmanup.com. That's feedback at the nextmanup.com. Again, we'd love to hear from you. Until next time, we'll see you later. Thank you.